Hey guys, Dennis Courtney here with Streamworks and the game. We're up to our usual shenanigans for STEM education. And we just wanted to make our second episode of what we're doing here at the STEM gym. It happens to be Marine Advanced Technology Education yep. season. And so what that means is thousands of students worldwide are gonna start building their ROVs. So we thought it'd be fun to see who could build the fastest ROV frame yep. in the fastest amount of time and still make it work, right? So of course we're gonna have winners and consequences. Somebody's gonna get some extra credit and all this. So without further ado, we're gonna get started with our ROV in a bag, frame, build it the fastest time, yep. make a robot yep. that goes in the water, yep. right? right? So it's gonna be cool and I will give you a hint on the extra credit. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be hashtag water game. Yeah. <laughs> Good, <What>? luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Okay, everybody. Today's challenge is to build an ROV. That's a remotely operated vehicle. So as everyone knows, mate season's happening. Marine Advanced Technology Education. We're super excited here in the Appalachian Highlands to host the Ranger Class competition, which will be held May 11th at ETSU. And so in preparation for that, some of the staff and I got together and said, hey, what do we normally do to prepare for marine advanced technology education season? And a lot of that revolves around the ROV and building the ROV. So this is an exercise we call ROV in the bag. And we take this into classrooms and schools and summer camps. And we show students how to take PVC, regular old PVC, inexpensive materials and build a frame and then add your motors in your control box. So this is actually the puffer fish control box that we sell right out of the Seamate store, which is less than 25 yards away from me. So uh, here we're gonna, hopefully everything will work and we're gonna build on who can build the ROV frame and assemble the uh, robot in the quickest amount of time. Wish me luck. All right, so what I know works well is the cube. So we instruct all first year teams to start off with a very simple design called the cube. So this is what my cube will look like. And again, I'm just drawing this just to illustrate how the cube is gonna look. Please forgive my artwork. It's not the best in the world, but I think you get the idea, right? So this is how my cube is gonna operate. And then I also wanna make sure that I have forward thrust and reverse thrust along with vertical and horizontal thrust. So I'm gonna put a motor right here, a motor right here, and then I'm gonna have one in the middle that's gonna give me my lift. So the way these ROVs work is really cool. It's almost like you're flying an airplane in the water because this is a 3D plane, right? Basically the thrusters are gonna be located near the center. That way that cube, when it spins, it's spinning on its axis really tight because in the mate competition, there are all kinds of little obstacles down here that you need to go pick up. And having that controllability on the ROV is essential to doing well in the scoring because you get 15 minutes. So hopefully it won't take me that long to build this ROV so I can demonstrate that. And hopefully we beat Gavin and Quentin. All right, so the first step, we're gonna design. I'm thinking I'm gonna keep it short and simple. We're gonna do a cube. And I'm thinking we do each dimension to 12 inches, somewhere around like this. Um, do 12 inches on each side. And then my motors are gonna be mounted down here, close to the bottom. Um, and then I'll put my tether strain relief somewhere up here. And then maybe I can come down with my, I need a vertical motor in here. I want that to be in the center. Um, so it, it goes up and down uh, with ease. So I may run some support in the back. Um, this may change, but either way, I need my motor to be here in the center of the robot. So let's get to it. All right, so today what we're gonna do is we're going to build an ROV. First off, I'm gonna start designing. I don't wanna do a square, it's too simple. Maybe an octagon. Maybe we put some T's here to connect at the bottom. And we'll call this, let's see, probably each one of these 45 degree elbows. And then we have inch and a half PVC here. And then we'll say five inch PVC here. And so this is kind of what the top will look like. And so the bottom will probably have uh, some more T's here, 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 and here. That way we can uh, add supports for the motors. Did you know the Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef system on earth? It's so big, it can even be seen from outer space. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started. I always like these um, three section 
pieces here, these really work well with um, building my frame. Let's see here. And because I've got many sides to it, one, two, three, four, four on the top, four on the bottom. So I know I'm gonna need four of these uh, three ways for the bottom. I always start with the bottom in mind. Hopefully the clock is started. And so I better get busy. Cause this shouldn't take too awful long. But these are a lot of fun, especially for in-classroom use if you're looking for something for your students to do. These are always fun and adventurous. And of course, I'm missing a piece of PVC. Where did it go? So we got the front. We also have to make sure that we identify the front and the back of the ROV. So we have what we call a, a T-cross, which is going to be where our control tether comes in on the very rear of the machine. So that's what this is right here. So you can see these are already pre-soldered in. These are what's cool about the ROV in the bag is it takes all the soldering out of the equation. That way you just put your pieces in and you're good to go. Now the, the key here is finding the right length. And usually these ROVs in the bag uh, already have the pieces identified, which in this case, I don't think that's the right piece. Let me find the right ones. Another exercise I like to encourage teachers to do too, is to have these without the PVC in here, have the students actually measure it out and come up with their own unique design and take a, take a yardstick or a meter stick and actually measure out all the pieces. This half inch PVC you can pick up at your local hardware store, very, very inexpensive. Well, it used to be until inflation hit, right? But still, it's affordable. And these make really sturdy frames. Safety glasses. Got all my sides cut. We're going to get some fittings. So the pieces I'm gonna wanna use are these three-way connectors. And I'm going to need eight of them. So gotta get eight of these first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and get this together. Um, and then I will worry about getting my motor attachments in next. So let's begin. All right, so this is the basic uh, frame that I have. Now I need to figure out how I'm gonna get the motors attached. I want them to be right around here. And then I want my vertical motor to be right in the center of the ROV. So uh, I'm gonna figure that out real quick. All right, so first we'll start off with a long one. Okay, almost done with the top. All right, so now we just need to rotate these T's upward. All right, now we got the top done. Uh, let's work on the bottom. So I'm gonna continue cutting some PVC and uh, we'll see where we end. All right, let's figure out how many we need for the bottom. Basically, it's just gonna be a replication of this. So I believe all of these will have T's. All right, so looks like we will need, this will be the front and then we will have a motor here and a motor here. And then this piece will be able to come out, and this is where we'll put our vertical motor. Did you know, oceans cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface, making them the largest habitat for diverse marine life. Put our motors up here. Now, I like to put the motors on the inside. That way, little fingers are tempted to put their hands in here. Otherwise, if they're on the outside of the frame, we would have, want to have shrouds. Might work. I might want to cut just a little bit off of here. So these really make good. Make sure you get your safety glasses on as you're cutting these. Take your PVC cutters. Again, you can pick these up at your local hardware store. Cut a little too short. I need a longer piece. All right, here we go. Now we're cooking. Okay, so we got our horizontal thrusters on here. So now we just need, the only one we're lacking now is our vertical. And we got some connector pieces here that we can use for our vertical. These 90 degree elbows make really, really good pieces for that. Sometimes you can even get a 45 degree 
elbow, which I like to use. So here's a 45 degree elbow that we can use. For this exercise, obviously we're just trying to get it in the water, get it buoyant, and beat Gavin and Quentin. Now, if I were to spend some more time on this, I would probably build a little bit more structure here. You can even drive uh, some self-tapping screws into your corners. Remember to drill holes in your sides, and then that way, because you can see the holes right here, that way the, the air, we get all the air out of the PVC, and that helps with the buoyancy to keep it nice and level. Okay, now that I have my tether management piece in and I've got my motors ready to be mounted, I need to figure out which motors go to which side that correlate to my controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that. Alrighty, now let's get eight more elbows. All right, there's our eight. I'll move this off to the side for now. We'll leave, that, we'll leave this spot open. All right, let me make sure that's still about the same. Alrighty. Something ain't adding up, Chief. Well, I forgot the teeth, so let me fix that real quick. All right. And then these two pieces will go here. All right, so we need to bend these T's back up. So now we just need to add the uh, middle supports, and those will be, we'll do, uh, we'll do about eight inches. Sweet. So now we just need to add the part for the motors. All right, so all that's left is we need to put a top up here for the cross. All right, so let's add the motors and uh, we'll test them and make sure they're all in the right positions. Did you know the deepest part of the ocean is the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench? It measures in at about 36,000 feet, which is about 11,000 meters deep. That's deeper than the Mount Everest is tall. All right, let's plug her up and see what happens. Always check your fuse in here too, because typically uh, one of the things that we do in our workshop is we always go and somebody's ROV doesn't work and then the motor spin and it's like, oh, what the heck happened? Well, it's probably because they either didn't have a fuse in there or it was blown. All right, so here we go. Oh, I got lights. Here's the puffer fish, the lights are on. Okay, so right here, I've got an issue, right? So my center button, I really want that to control my vertical i did that on purpose just to show you this is so easy to correct watch this so disconnect power real quick and because my vertical and my right horizontal are in the wrong spots i'm just going to simply change out my motors all right back on power on and now what happened i changed out the wrong motor There we go. Time. All right, now that I got my motors mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and give them one more test and then I'm gonna get the uh, wires managed properly. All right, looks good. And uh, let's get those zip ties on. All right, done. Should be ready for the pool. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so this one will go on to the left of the robot. 
this motor is the vertical motor. It's gonna be a little off, but. And then this one will go here. All right, so let's get some zip ties. Do some cable management. All right, so let's plug it up and we'll see if it works. So let's test the vertical and the forward. So we'll go forward first, we'll go backward first, and then we got the vertical. So uh, that's my ROV. Okay, guys, what a, an incredible experience. I think we all worked really, really hard mm -hmm. on putting those ROVs together. So if you have any questions, go back to our website and check out the uh, ROV competition. Again, our event is May 11th at East Tennessee State University. But uh, man, you guys did pretty good. I'm impressed. I mean, these guys have over five years experience in the ROV teams. They are the first of their kind at ETSU in setting up their Explorer class teams. They come from DBXL, the OR Mateys, the first Marine Advanced Technology Education Initiative team in the state of Tennessee. So that, that says a lot. They got a lot of experience in there. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and uh, crown. We have the golden drone, but we're just going to pretend. You know, remember that a underwater drone, this is essentially the same thing. It just goes underwater, right? But here's our golden drone. And the award goes to Gavin. I thought mine was better, but nah. Yours was a little bit more complicated, yeah, I think, nice. but the, the competition wasn't based on complexity. It was what? Fastest. fastest. The fastest on time, right? Which nice. in a classroom, that might be a lot of fun, but remember, have your students break out the tape measure and break out the ruler, be safe, always wear safety glasses and cutting PVC, right? But now without further ado, there's extra credit that's assigned to these STEM shenanigans, right? So Quentin, of course, hosts our news desk with uh, what's new in STEM education. And so as part of his extra credit, he is going to have to film what's new in STEM with his trusty aquatic apparel right here from the STEM gym swimming pool here at Streamworks. That's a cool this ought to be fun, huh? Yeah, it's kind of cold. It's uh, cold. Okay, well, you have a wetsuit? Nope. <laughs> was it. Well, good luck, Quentin. Thank you for doing extra credit. We yep. appreciate you. Congratulations, Gavin. You. Good job. We'll see you again on the next episode of STEM Shenanigans here at Streamworks. Thank you, guys. God bless. Oh. <laughs> remember, remember me running out in a chicken suit? Yeah. I <laughs>